Hey guys, today we are going to discuss the Samyang 24mm f2.8 and ask, is it the best value full frame lens for vlogging? Or, like trying to have a lavish meal in a McDonald's, does cheap mean crappy? Let's find out. Thankfully, unlike McDonald's, this lens doesn't come with any increased heart disease risk or a terrifying clown man, so that is a good start. Everything we are going to cover is listed here. There are timestamps in the description, plus stick around until the end for conclusions and outtakes. And if you enjoy the video, then like, subscribe, and I would love to hear your questions or thoughts in the comments, just like I'm sure you would love to hear the basic facts about this lens. The Samyang has a list price of £250, but you will likely be able to find it for a bit less than this. Either way, it is among the cheapest lenses available for Sony full frame, and certainly among the cheapest options for vlogging. You get an f2.8 aperture, built-in autofocus, and a 49mm filter thread, all in the super compact and portable form factor, smaller than a hamster, and much less likely to poop in your hand. This is a prime lens with a 24mm focal length, but what does that mean for our field of view? For landscapes, the 24mm focal length you get in full frame mode will capture an expansive view, which is really nice for scene setting. Like my post-pandemic waistline, it's wide, but thankfully not wide enough to be really distracting. You can also switch to APS-C mode for a 1.5 times crop, giving you a 36mm equivalent view. You still capture plenty, but it's a little more focused and a bit closer to the field of view of the human eye. For vlogging, you'll want to stay in full frame mode at 24 millimeters, where you get a nice view shooting handheld at arm's length. This might be slightly tight if you shoot with a body that has gyro stabilization and later crop in with catalysts to stabilize your footage like I often do, but I'd say it's still a very solid vlogging angle. If you want more background or a wider field of view, a grip extension like the Gorillapod will work great. Plus, thanks to the form factor of the lens, the whole setup remains really light and user-friendly. Close-up shots work nicely, particularly at 36mm, where you get a nice level of detail and you can really notice our next topic, bokeh. The f2.8 aperture has seven blades and gives you a nice shallow depth of field and pleasingly smooth transitions between in and out of focus areas. This isn't the most dramatic bokeh I've ever seen. Dramatic. dramatic. Stay tuned for future videos on the Sigma 16mm f1.4, Sony 20mm f1.8, and more if dramatic bokeh is what interests you. But the Samyang bokeh is definitely prominent enough for attractive results and a clear contrast between subject and background. For vlogging, bokeh nicely smooths out the background, giving a clear focal point without totally obscuring what's behind you. I like the results, but like a long-term steroid abuser, our bokeh has uh, small balls. Compared to other lenses I've tested, the fully out of focus bokeh isn't the most attractive, and if you want it to be more prominent, you'll need to shoot pretty close up. And like a groin trauma victim, those balls are also not perfectly round. They are pretty close, and the shape doesn't bother me, but if you care, then be aware. Hey, that rhymed! Like the lamest rap ever. If you care, then be aware, and if you're losing your hair, better call Tony Blair. Man, even on purpose, doing something purposefully bad, that was painful. Overall, I think the bokeh is nice while remaining understated, and while it can be especially attractive in close-ups, I don't think it's going to blow anyone away, but perhaps the design and build quality will. The lens is super light at 93 grams and ultra compact at just 3.7 centimeters in length. That means with this lens on the a7C, you're getting a full frame f2.8 setup with autofocus that weighs just over 600 grams. It might even fit in a larger coat pocket. That is pretty crazy. So the design is pretty cool, but the build quality is where you see the compromises behind that budget price tag. The lens feels plasticky, not very robust, and like holding a parrot with diarrhea, it's not a great experience in the hand. Even the lens cap feels kind of cheap and cheerful, but these things do contribute to that insane light weight. In fact, the lens is light enough to balance on an entry-level gimbal like the Xion Crane M2 with the a7C. That combination would be cheaper, lighter, and more compact than most full-frame vlog setups I can think of, all while giving you great stabilization. Speaking of which, there is no in-lens stabilization here. As usual, IBIS will be okay for simple static camera movements, but for vlogging, there are more shakes than a 1950s diner. We already covered how well the Xion or other gimbals work, but remember, 
these are at an extra cost, unlike catalyst stabilization, which works well and has the advantage of being free, provided you have a body like the A7C or other post-2020 Sony releases that have gyroscopic stabilization. The Samyang is wide enough that a slight crop when stabilizing with catalyst still leaves a good blogging angle, so it's a great option for zero cost and zero extra gear. Just remember the need for extra manual effort in post-production. On the topic of manual effort, the manual focus experience here is pretty decent. There is a single focus ring which, like the acting of Arnold Schwarzenegger, is a little stiff but definitely usable and capable of good results. The focus ring gives pretty consistent results and doesn't have a huge range of motion from closest to furthest focused, so it's reasonably good for manual focus pulls and can definitely deliver smooth cinematic results with a little effort. But what if a little effort is still too much then? Autofocus is the answer. Unfortunately, like when I get an interview question about my motivation, it's not a very good answer. Ah, oh, great question. So. I guess I'm driven by my desire to start a brutal dictatorship and rule society with an iron fist. Uh, plus, also uh, love working in teams and I'm a keen problem solver. But it's not all bad. Autofocus will track you well in good light and simple vlogging situations are no problem. That might be all that you need. However, as you can see here, it struggles a bit with rapid movement, so it's not great for fast moving subjects, though I hope for your sake you don't normally move like I do here. The lens also struggles with rack focus. You can get nice results with touch tracking autofocus, but my success rate was patchy and sometimes you'll have more trouble switching targets than Stevie Wonder at sniper school. The autofocus also struggles to achieve the minimum focus distance of 14.5 centimeters, which I was able to get in manual focus mode. Overall, the autofocus is good enough for vlogging and basic shots, but it's more of a weakness than a highlight. But Maybe that f2.8 aperture means that for this lens, low light will be a highlight. Do you see what I did there? Low light, highlight, pretty clever. I, I'll see myself out. You can get pretty good low light results with this lens. The decently wide aperture does a good job pulling in light so you can keep ISO lower and minimize noise and image softness. Plus, while the bokeh remains a bit unremarkable, lights do help it stand out more at night and can make for some really attractive shots. But the killer here is autofocus again. Even in fairly good street lighting, it will routinely lose you when vlogging at ISO 6400 and shutter 1 over 50. Pushing up to ISO 12800, autofocus is definitely more consistent but it will still lose you 5 to 10% of the time in my experience. Low light image quality itself is nice, especially at lower ISOs, and the vlog background blur you get is really pretty, so you could use manual focus or just pay a bit closer attention to ensure you get good results. So, conclusion time. Is this the best value vlog lens? Let's consider the pros and cons. We get incredible lightness and portability, which is genuinely useful, However, the trade-off here is a very budget-focused build quality. Still an overall positive in my opinion. Another pro is the f2.8 aperture. Bokeh is more understated than I expected, but it's still smooth, looks really nice, and a bit of effort can get great results. Focal length is also a positive. 24mm works well for vlogging, and the lightness means that if you want to add a grip extension, it remains really easy and comfortable to use. The 36mm cropped view is a nice extra option, and one I particularly like for close-ups. But it's not all good. We get no built-in stabilization, so you'll need to either pay with cash for a gimbal or pay with your time to use catalyst stabilization since Sony's built-in steady shot kind of sucks for vlogging. The biggest disappointment for me has been autofocus. I want to stress that if you're mainly just walking and vlogging in good light, then it works great. But low light, more rapid movement, rack focus shots for your B-roll, all of those can still give good results, but the error rate and the issues in those situations mean that you will need to pay more attention and likely get more takes. For the price, if you are mainly vlogging or you know you can work with the strengths and weaknesses we've discussed, I can definitely recommend this lens. And if that does describe you, this may well be your best value vlog lens option. But if you need more capability or you think the weaknesses will cause you problems, you probably are better putting that same money towards a more expensive but more well-rounded option. Let me know what you think as well as any questions down in the comments. And that is it for today. 
Massive thank you for watching, especially making it all the way to the end. If you enjoyed the video, then like, subscribe, and until next time, take it easy. If you care, then be aware, and if you're losing your hair, better call Tony Blair. Help me out, Tony Blair, because it is so unfair. Are you here? Are you there? Is your friend Gordon Brown in town? I don't know.